Part of my 10 day challenge is to provide you with one tip a day that will help you put together a better business glossary. What is a business glossary? Simply put, a business glossary is a collection of business terms with their unique definitions and other useful related information. No, it's not the same as a business dictionary, a business catalog, nor a data dictionary or data catalog or data inventory. A business glossary is business language focused and easily understood in any business setting from business boardroom meetings to technical meetings. It's not meant to define data but rather to define what each term means in a business sense. What do we mean by customer, sale conversion rate, credit, GPA? These types of questions can be answered with a business glossary. It defines the business concepts for an organization or industry, and these concepts tend to be independent from any specific database or vendor. Understand the relationship between a business glossary, a data dictionary, and a data catalog. The business glossary is one of the deliverables of the data governance program, but it's not the only one. Amongst others, you also have the data dictionary and the data catalog. All these three artifacts create a trifecta to enable a more data-driven organization. Where should you look at to start populating your business glossary with content. Identify a couple of your most used reports. Are all the terms in these reports columns clearly defined and consistent? Probably not. So that's a great area to start looking at and find those terms that you should start defining. You can also focus on a single business area first. This allows you to reach a critical mass quickly. It also makes the process of gathering and or modifying the terms easier as you have less people to coordinate in meetings, workshops, or working groups. And trust me, there will be a lot of meetings to get consensus on definitions for some of your terms. It can take an organization, on average, five months to reach a consensus on a business term such as customer. What information should you capture for each term? Besides the definition, obviously, you should capture the status, the data steward, definition source, the acronym, and some sort of a taxonomy. In fact, there are nine or 10 must-have attributes you should have as part of your first release, your first iteration of your business glossary. And then another 20 to 30 when you're ready to evolve your glossary to its next maturity level. Of course, all of these are covered in detail in my online course. Quality is better than quantity. When you start populating your business glossary, don't just dump in all the terms and definitions that you find in your organization's files. If you do that, its users will quickly lose confidence in the information and the value that this tool provides. You want your stakeholders to use it, to see it as a common place, a trusted source of information where they can go to and understand business terminologies and other relevant information around these terms. What do you think about these tips? Please give me a thumbs up on the video if you're finding them useful. Tune in into the WIIFM. Why are you implementing a business glossary for your organization? People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Don't just assume that if you're building it, your colleagues will come and start using it. You need to start engaging your stakeholders from the very beginning and sit down with them and ask them lots of questions. Work out with them what the value for them will be. And there are usually six main benefits that the business glossary brings, but find out why it is important for them. This will also help you later on when it comes to getting end user adoption for the business glossary. And remember, when you find out that why with the first set of stakeholders, it will not be the same why with the second set of stakeholders. So keep that in mind. Don't make assumptions. How will you measure the success of your business glossary? Develop and publish metrics and key performance indicators, KPIs. Use these to show progress in the business glossary development and also engagement of the user community and adoption of this tool. And there are quite a few quantitative and qualitative metrics that you can adopt, such as 
the number of unique users accessing it per unit of time, number of terms published, number of domains described, number of terms linked to data elements, minimum, maximum, average duration of time from the beginning to the end life cycle of each term. These are just a few of the metrics that I cover in the online course that I recommend you to start with. Don't focus on a tool first. I find that the tool often creates a barrier for starting the business glossary in the first place. People think that a tool is a must have and if they can't secure the budget for it, then they shouldn't go ahead starting a business glossary. I recommend against this way of thinking. Why? Because there are a lot of things that need to be done before you need a tool, such as finding out and adopting best practices, putting together guides and rules on how to create quality content for it, determining the life cycle of the term, the operating model, and so much more. Of course, all of this plus more gets covered in this online course. If you don't have these in place before getting a tool, it will probably be sitting on the shelf. Or if it's put in use, you'll keep on changing things with it so much that it could hurt that end user adoption. Identify your champions. Find internal champions who get the benefit of the business glossary and can act as cheerleaders for the effort. From a change management perspective, these could also be your change agents and early adopters. The value of a business glossary may not be self-evident to some. Plus, too many people confuse the terms data dictionary, enterprise data model, data catalog, business glossary, because all of them have definitions or descriptions contained within them. Champions help with messaging and dispelling confusion, but also to convince others to start using it and adopting it. People are resistant to change. Start with this assumption. Unless you bring people to buy in, your business glossary won't be a success. How do we do that? We do this through the use of change management. A very important premise of the success of the implementation and adoption of the business glossary is to start a change management process at the same time as you're starting your project. Now when you're deploying the tool, that's too late. So you need to identify your stakeholders early in the project and determine what's in it for them. Identify change agents, early adopters, late adopters, even resistors, as you need to address them differently. Find out more about this, plus the training, communication, and resistance plan from my Business Glossary online course. These are just 10 tips for helping you implement a better business glossary. For more tips and more importantly, best practices and the steps to follow to implement an easy to use and efficient business glossary that users will adopt and management will praise, please check out this online course on business glossaries. Thank you.